tape measure that obviously has metric on it to uh, do the 450 millimeters and then also the 475 so on the market. <clears throat> so to make the job of uh, cutting the the boards easier I'm going to do four at once um, which I had ripped, well not ripped, which I cut on the, uh, the bandsaw and I'm using the square to make sure the ends are all lined up and I'm going to clamp it down and cut it so it'll be, it'll all be four pieces at a time will all be the same one big time. for the 450 millimeter length pieces. So I'm marking this piece as 475. And I have my six 450 millimeter by 100 millimeter um, pieces of wood here, and then the top piece, which is 475 millimeters. And I got my number six three quarter inch screws. Um, so I'm going to mark spot an inch in from each end. the whole thing for the other the, uh, <clears throat> the two sides this board is going to be placed at the bottom in the middle like that. so I'm stacking two quarter inch washers which is pretty much three millimeters um, putting it under the bottom board. I'm going to, I have a clamp just to kind of hold it in position. I'm going to start with this screw, remove the clamp, do the next one, and then obviously do the side screws, then do the next one. So I'm now um, putting the top cross brace um, piece in. I have the screw holes marked off. I'm going to drill, countersink, and uh, so here's everything assembled except for the top piece. Which um, will be going on next. I have the uh, the top clamped on. I have the um, screw holes marked. I'm gonna screw it in, and um, so here's the uh, box frame open. all completed for the Pressa i3 um, box frame version. And they used a uh, rusted aluminum blue um, red bronze. We had some lying around. It looked kind of nice. It's got a kind of shinier. Um, look to it a little bit more of a I don't know luster than a flat black, but uh, I do have orange printed pieces. So I think it
two hardware kit that I got. It didn't come with the M4 nuts or uh, bolts, so it must have been a um, must have a newer set of prints, I guess maybe. For uh, I'm just going to assemble it right now. Just kind of continue on. Now the file rod, nut, and washer, nut, and washer, and do the same for the other one. There those are. Uh, So these are basically lined up. I purchased a aluminum plate for the bed, which I pre-drilled bolt, which is nice. I'm going to use uh, M3 by 15 millimeter um, bolts with uh, 3 millimeter nuts to uh, attach these. To if there's one, I'm going to do. So I had to narrow the. Um, the distance because this particular bed is uh and all the documents online that show it but nice and smooth. I haven't clicked them in yet so I can mount it to the um to the box but uh but as you can see it uh, so I'm gonna uh, set up the motor for the Y axis.
I bought a bunch of stuff for the i3 online on eBay, and the bearing kit that I got did not, um, it didn't come with four, um, 623 bearings. I have a 626 lying around that I'm going to try and stick in here. Uh, I have some aluminum lying around that I turned down, put a three millimeter hole in, and uh, made the uh, inside diameter, the outside six millimeter to kind of suffice that. So that will now fit in here, and I won't have to drill out any new holes. 626 may work okay with adequate tension. Yep, yeah. it just makes it. It's just going to fall off the um, the guide, so uh, I need to figure out something to do with that. Maybe some washing. Here's my final something. update for the X idler. Still have the 626 in there. I'm using some quarter inch uh, flat washers, and the um, the inside guide for that six millimeters down to three millimeters for the inside bore of the bearing. I also had one of these sitting around from um, some rollerblades uh, for 608 bearings. And um, the outside diameter of this little piece here fits perfectly inside the um, quarter inch flat washer. And then the inside bore fits perfectly over the 6 millimeter um, spacer that I have in there. So I'm using those to kind of pad for the washers. So now it's kind of like it's pretty perfect. Um, probably won't use this as the um, permanent solution, but uh, I don't want to wait till Tuesday to finish the machine or at least to, to get it tested. So it's still smooth with proper tension and it won't slip off and get caught on the sides if I just had the one bearing. So it's pretty good for now. So I'm going to start working on the X <coughs> axis. Zip ties to secure these in, and if I need to later, I'll uh, swap it out for something else. But find so, kind of like that. Flip these guys out so that I can get access. There we go. The the M4 nut goes in the trap. I use a M4 25 millimeter. Not for now. For the sake of the video, I will just use that. And then another M4 by 20. Take that on. Shorter M4, 20 millimeter. Anyways, will be more idea. And then there's that component. So I'm gonna put the uh, M5 nut in me. So I'm going to attach the x-axis motor to the x-axis, and I'm doing that with uh, M3 by 10 millimeter. So the um, the y-axis is pretty much all set. It's mounted to the box frame. I think for more stability, I had a piece of a uh, medium density fiberboard line around that I'm going to use for a base and so I'm going to drill and countersink underneath and go up into the frame along this the each side here and here and then I'm also going to do 
where the nuts are, two holes on each side, and underneath I'm going to route a channel for zip ties, because I don't actually have like the, I know they sell, and they have some um, parts you can use to print out or to maybe buy some mounting brackets for for it, but I don't actually have a printer yet, so um, I'll just use zip ties, so I'll put two two holes route a channel between so it doesn't affect its level on the you know how level it is on the table I'll do that in each each corner and so I think that'll the bottom of the um, board that the press will be mounted to as you can see the um, mounting holes for the box frame are countersunk so that the screws won't affect how level the uh, the wood is these are for the zip ties to mount the front and the back of the uh, y-axis frame they've been routed out not a very good job, but I don't actually, uh, I just used a router bit on my, uh, my floor model drill press to do that by hand. But these recesses, the zip tie, will be in there, but it'll be down low so it won't affect the um, how level. This so is here's the uh, frame and Y axis mounted to the base. Frame in the back, as you can see, zip ties. Um, and the the top is much better. I can't really wobble it much anymore. Whereas when it was just freestanding, it's so narrow that I could kind of wobble it, and this wouldn't really move too much. But the top wood, which seems like that's a substantial problem, since you know a lot of you know the X and the Z are in the uh, are in up up top on the box frame, so um, a lot more stable setup. And just out of contact with the. Right. That does it for that. Alright, so the deal with this is they recommend pulling your your rod up enough to allow you to get that X axis on there. So I'll do the same with that side on the rod. First off, if it causes issues, I can always cut longer ones and try again, which is nice, but uh, anyhow. There's your Z, and then obviously. Alright, so I'm going to attach the belt, the X belt, to the X axis. I had to kind of cut out a little bit to allow these to fit in pretty good over there. So, I'm going to wrap that on the motor. Feet under there. And then over the idler. Basically, my uh, idler was uh, the 626s uh, with my own little thing I uh, set up. I had to uh, make a couple little adjustments. Get that. Whereas this one, you gotta. So I uh, was able to get it to work, though it was um, a bit loose at first. The best thing to do is to let out the tensioner all the way so that you can use this. Uh, to tighten the belt. It's pretty good right now. So uh, so that's kind of what I did and it works really well. The, uh, you can see and the, uh, the the update with the 626 does work perfectly fine. There's no, um, it doesn't snag or anything. So as a temporary fix It'll be fine, and, and maybe even as a permanent fix, we'll see when it starts printing. But I did order some 623s just in case. And I'm taking a 5mm rod, good rod, and threading it down. It's going to take a while, I think. So I'm going to attempt to assemble the Extruder, uh, which is a 
I guess Greg's weight extruder. So that's in. Uh, the hardware kit that I got didn't really come with the sizes that I really wanted, so I'm going to use uh, 632 for now. Alright, so with this, I'm actually using the 3mm, um, 20mm uh, 20 length, just because the, uh, the it's kind of set up to accept the uh, the nut, but uh, wasn't really working too well with the six. With the um, six dash thirty two that I was using. Anyways, I had to. Uh, you almost need a twenty five millimeter bolt. I only have twenty, or you know, a much bigger one. But then there's no thread, so it didn't work. So I kind of like drilled a, a larger diameter hole to accommodate for the head of this so it'll actually go all the way through all the way in there. Right. Oops. But as you can maybe see, you probably can't the uh the bolt actually goes all the way through so it won't wobble back and forth, which is what I wanted. Um and that works pretty good. Alright, so so Every hot bolt must be different, I don't know, but this one requires substantial, um, needs to, you know, needs a lot of spacing between the gear and the body to line up the hob with the hole, so I don't know if that matters, to me it seems like it could a little bit, but um, I don't know, I have no experience with, uh, this is my first 3D printer, so so be it. And uh, they don't have a. They didn't include a lock. In that, but um, I imagine you want very little play, but you want it to move freely. I put in three nut. And there, I, it was a little tight. I had to use a little heat to get it to go in. But um, this will be basically your set screw for the motor. It's going to drive the okay. extruder. Herringbone gear, I guess. I have it lined up so that it'll uh, set up and mount it already so that yeah. it'll mesh with, with the teeth. And lining up the holes. The rest of them. There you go. Alright, so I'm going to put the, um, the tensioning springs on the hinge. Uh, I don't have any M4s, and I can't source any M4s locally that are over 20 millimeters, so I'm using these 832 2 inch ones. These springs I just have had lying around. I ordered some of the ones that uh, typically are used on the rep wraps. Those will be in later in the week, but I'm going to do these just so I can get going on this. Um, anyways. 832 nuts I really had to file down to fit into those traps which uh, was kind of a pain but you know you do what you gotta do 632 is kind of fit but they just float around so you don't want that either um, but you know alright so I'm going to attach the uh, J head to the um, to the wage extruder with these set screws for now. I'll probably end up getting an adapter plate later. But for now, this is what I'll be using. So, I have these on the M3 nuts in the back. I had to extend the, the holes a little bit for the, the heads of the uh, M3 by 40 millimeters that I had in my hardware kit, which, you know, they almost need to be 50 millimeters if you don't want to modify. Um, what you're getting out of the printed parts. I don't know if it's going to matter or not. Hopefully not. Or stop like noise. Print the part again. Maybe.
exactly how I was doing it, but um, I got the end stops mounted on the Z axis isn't adjusted, but that won't happen until I start calibrating it. And that one. Next, I need to do the heated bed wiring and then start testing. So this things is where out. I'm at now. I have the um, the bed, the uh, heat heated bed on the aluminum plate. I used uh, M3, I'm not sure the size, maybe 30 millimeters, um, with some springs, washers, um, and nylock nut on the back of each. I kind of have the wires and, hooked uh, up and routed kind of to the back power supply. So I'm basically going to be attaching everything to the case now. I adjusted the um, Hulu drivers on the ramps to 0.4 volts. And I'm going to use this uh, TechFlex stuff to um, make the wires look real good. So neat. here's the Pressa i3 that I've been building. Pretty much done. Um, I do have the glass. Uh, I just need to buy some binding clips. I'm going to do some calibration and kind of get it going anyways, just for the sake of uh, trying it out. Not on this section of the video. I'm just going to show you what I did. I had a lot of this uh, flex... Um, you know, cable wrap, and I use it pretty much on everything to kind of keep it nice and neat. And I think it worked out pretty well. In the back, you can kind of see have the power supply mounted as they suggested. Um, I ordered the switch fuse setup, and I'm going to be doing that. Um, but for now, I just have it hooked up to a cable. Um, it's a little crazy in there, but I mean, even with the cable wrap, I mean, still a lot of wiring. It's almost like the whole thing needs to be in a box. Um, but I think it should do alright. I kind of have this set up over here so that these guys can kind of move in and out as they need to. But So after uh, plenty of setting changes and uh, configs and stuff, I'm printing a uh, test part. I don't know how it'll turn out. It looks pretty good so far. Um, just getting the extruder working right. Um, adjusting it so it'll pull in the filament and not just chew it up was one thing. The Waze extruder, ABS temperatures with the uh, J head didn't work out because the bottom started to bow out and it started to bend. got a little too hot so I took a piece of uh, eighth of an inch aluminum flat stock and made my own uh, mounting plate instead of uh, waiting forever for it to come in the mail. So um, that's that. And Got some capped on tape on there. It seems like that'll be quite the process to figure out how to get that on there really good. In my quest to make this uh, box frame press a more rigid, more than putting the base plate in, anchoring this so that it won't flex as much and add more surface area on the bottom, um, I'm also making these sides, which have a pretty good fit. Um, and that should kind of complete the deal with regard to uh, adding some extra rigidity to the whole setup. Um, cutting it out on my bandsaw. There'll be one on the other side. And instead of printing a holder for the switch, I'll just have it be mounted right in there on the other side. Um, so it'll be a little bit more of a flush kind of in, inside, you know, integrated design instead of something that's like a pre printed part on there. And then this, I'll try and paint that same color, and, and that'll be it for the I have this, you know, the back support pieces painted. That came out pretty nice. The switch will be in here like that. And as you can see, it's all painted. Um, I'm basically just going to drill some holes here. And then on the base, I'm going to drill up and into this section over here to kind of anchor it. And, um, yeah, and that'll be it. I'll make sure that the sides are square before I attach it to the inside. And uh, then I'll do the wiring for the switch. And I'll have to move this out to accommodate. And um, other than that, so the last step is this uh, really basic spool holder, which the box frame really is pretty good for because you can just drill a couple holes, use some threaded rods. These are a little short, but for these small spools, who work okay, and then I can always add um, longer rods later for the bigger spools. But this is just to get me going. Anyways, uh, two washers each and two nuts. And I also um, 
used some, oh, here we go, some angle aluminum and fashioned some, um, you know, thread it on one end and then it'll just kind of sit and hold it like that on the other end. And, uh, and yeah, that's basically so it. So here's the fairly easy cheesy spool holder on the box frame. Press I3. It's kind of modified now because of uh, how I set up these sides. It's almost like that, that other one, but a little different. Got the power connector in here. And moves smooth enough. No bearings or anything, but I'll probably print something that's a little bit better later on. This is set up so that you can uh, undo a nut and pop it right out if you need to. Go back in, so not too bad. This setup would be kind of a pain to get the spools off, but um, anyways, it'll work. I do have um, this thing still that I'm going to mount, but I'll probably print a case Test for that. Print, basically. Um, I keep getting to a, a certain point where I'll get a jam inside the uh, the extruder where the idler is, and the, the bolt kind of like can't um, can't push it through anymore. Um, and also the extruder itself on the bottom, after running it for a little bit of time, it does take some time. I have it on a slower setting. The bolts were starting to sag because the plastic was getting hot. So um, even with this aluminum plate that I fashioned um, myself, I'm not sure if the ones you can buy are thicker, but um, but that wasn't doing the trick. It, it helped. But not enough, I think the heat was rising up enough to the point that it, it could no longer apply enough pressure and it was just kind of kinking in there. So, I have a lot of uh, PC power supplies lying around that have these great heat sinks. And uh, basically, I, I took two of them out. And this one I kind of cut the shape around the, the uh, hot end. This one kind of just fit right in and um, drilled them out. And uh, they're mounted with the uh, the two mounting points and uh, I can touch them which is a good sign because I couldn't touch the metal before and the plastic is cool and there's also a lot more tension on this line so so far so good um, I think I might have gotten it um, this one was the last one I did and that's how high I got before I bailed because it stopped feeding out uh, filament so almost there working really well still pretty cool you know warm but cool still good tension on that idler is still spinning so I know it's feeding and um that looks really good but uh prints turn out really good it is yay I finally completed a print looks pretty good It's pretty nice on the side. The wall is very smooth. Um, so I think it will turn out to be a pretty good print. I mean, it's pretty good prints, but um, I noticed that at higher speeds, um, the motion would be so fast 
that without lock washers, um, these bolts would slowly, especially the uh, where the Y belt connects with the bed, um, would get loose, and then you get a lot of backlash, obviously, and eventually the bed would probably come completely disconnected. Um, so I took the heated bed off, put on some lock washers on all these, and also used some lock plates. Printing the uh, cover for the full graphics display that I have for the um, for my rep wrap. Uh, still gotta figure out how I'm gonna mount it on mine. I, I either have to make the um, ribbon cables a little bit longer, or uh, maybe drill some holes in the top to feed the cables through to, to mount it where I want to put it. But this is running at 100 um, millimeters per second. Obviously, the uh, first layer or so is the uh, first layer or two is slower so uh, you know that's why it's starting off this way. I'll record little segments uh, throughout but um, you know the printer's running really well, extruding really well. So. Uh, the uh, trip has been running really, really quite well. Again, I uh, have this LCD display that I'm working on the enclosure for. Obviously, I didn't make the enclosure, I got it on, online, but uh, the fit is uh, it's quite good. So, uh, I know the printer is calibrated uh, to where I want it to be. Um, to make some parts, so between the top and the button, oh, I got to uh, design a new mount for the actual printer. Um, this one came from a row stock, so it's a uh, mini printer. Well, here it is finished. Looks pretty good. Probably let it cool down before I take it off. But uh, came pretty. So here's my just about final setup for now of the Pressa i3. Um, it's working really well. I, um, as I mentioned, I reinforced the back with these pieces to keep this more stable. Um, I have the switch on the side. Everything's pretty neat. Um, I added this. Uh, I got to shorten this, but uh, basically, it keeps the alum this aluminum um, bed from vibrating at uh, higher speeds, like 100 millimeters per second and over. Um, I get a lot of noise, you know. And um, so this is very lightly touching the um, the aluminum bed. It has this like felt material that I glued on the uh, like a piece of aluminum extruded angle, and um, I got that at a marine store, but. Uh, using quarter inch uh, bolts, washers, lock nuts, um, just to keep that secured on here. Kind of a prototype setup, uh, maybe we'll make a printed part, put it online, but uh, but it works really well. It's coming down, um, I used some white lithium grease on the threads and that removed all of that noise, so the z-axis is a lot quieter. Um, I still have this heat sink on here though. I did find that uh, my problem was the J-head nozzle came with this, um, it's probably not for a wades because it had this top top uh, brass piece with like kind of like a push-in um, clamp for the filament or something like that, but um, so I took that off and I was using that, but uh, there was no set screw to hold the uh, PTFE liner in there, so I kept getting jams because of that. 
Um, basically, I just cut the threads off of that um, brass piece and was able to um, thread the hole a little bit so that I could use a number six screw with some um, with some nuts to kind of like screw it back in without having anything to grab onto. And it's been working perfectly ever since um, at high speeds and everything like that. Not really any jams, so that's been good. Oh, um, and I got my spool holder, which I sh you know I believe I showed in earlier parts of the video. And then um, I have this mounted, and I printed the the case for the LCD, so that printed really well. And I designed a little mount for the back for the uh, Press I3. I have a newer version that has like side. Um, supports instead of just because it's a little flexy but uh, but not too bad it works pretty good I had to put another hole in here for the ribbon cables and I had to move the um, the electronics if you can see it kind of up a little more so that uh, I didn't have to redo the ribbon cables but uh, overall it's been a good project it's printing well and um, I'm pretty happy with it so far